But when you're stuck and you're at zero and you got nothing going on, you're probably thinking about yourself. And you're thinking about, woe is me, and how am I gonna make something happen, and how am I gonna pay for my Lambo, and how am I gonna look good on social media, and what crypto is gonna go to the moon. But when you go into give mode, when you think about other people, when you think about how I can make somebody else better, it feels awesome. I remember when my career was first starting to blossom and I was doing six figures for the first time. And the thing that held me back the most was this tormenting fear that it was all gonna go away, that it was all going to go to zero and I was gonna be a failure and have to move back to Ohio and live with my mom and work at Walmart for the rest of my life. And what helped me kind of bridge the gap between this like, I'm doing okay, but I, I'm afraid all of the time, which is this terrible place to be because you're an entrepreneur and you wanna create more and grow more and do more and you just feel stuck when you're afraid of it all going away. The thing that helped me build the bridge between that and way more success was becoming okay with the nightmare scenario of everything going to zero. And if you can have a plan for what happens if it all goes away or you're just starting out, you're starting over, and you have a plan that's gonna get you right back to where you were before, it can set you free to be able to grow and create the speed at which you're truly capable. There are a few things that I have done in every starting over period that get me right back on my feet, that get me right back to a place of creation again. And these habits and these practices have shortened that window of failure and allowed me and the people that I've shared it with to get motion and movement again. And if you're first starting out on your journey, this will take you to a place of growth and profit and creation much faster than if you are just like waiting for things to line up or waiting for things to get better. This will make things better much faster. The first thing you should know is there's a temptation when you're starting over or when, you're, when you've are when you lost something to get in your head and try to figure out what's next before you just start moving. And I think the opposite is a healthier, more productive use of your focus and your time. And that is just start making things happen. Just start doing things before you have it all figured out. It's kind of like when you are thinking about dating or you wanna meet the love of your life, writing down all of the things that he or she is going to have and then deciding what their name is going to be and what their favorite movie is and what their favorite ice cream is gonna be, you have no idea any of those things. You just start dating and you find out what you like and what you don't like and then one is completely different than all the others and you fall in love and you have children or it ends in a horrible, horrible divorce. Either way, you finally met that person and you made some progress here. And that is what I think entrepreneurs need to do rather than try to figure out exactly how this is gonna go and how much money I'm gonna make. Just start like making things happen and we can then start to fill in the pieces of everything that you want. It is important for you to have the list of the things you want in a relationship or in a business, but you don't actually know what those things are until you've tasted a few things. So in business and in your career, make the list, but make the list based on data that you've experienced on things that are moving or things that are not working rather than the thing in your head that you've made up right now when times aren't so good. I had a great piece of advice given to me by author Greg Reed. Uh, Greg Reed runs the Napoleon Hill Institute and Greg said to me once, never make life decisions when you're in a bad place. Always wait for things to turn before you make those long-term decisions. So never decide what your life is gonna look like or what you're gonna do for money or who you're gonna marry when things suck. You wait for the tide to turn when you're in a good place, when things are moving forward, that you decide those long-term things. Now I'm gonna give you a couple things that you can do to turn the tide much faster. The first thing that I would recommend that you do when you are starting over is to make a list of 10 people in your network and send them thank you cards. Notice I didn't say start a new business or start a YouTube channel. No, make a list of 10 people who are already in your life and show gratitude for them. Now this will do two things. One, it will put you in a mindset of gratitude. It will show you what you have rather than what you don't have. But the second thing that it will do is it will force you to look at who in your life actually has things moving. Who do you maybe wanna get around more often? Who has things going on that are interesting? Who inspires you? 
Because those people have opportunities. Those people have needs and wants and desires. They have resources that they can share with you. And it's tempting. A lot of people will call those people up and ask for something. I think that's a mistake. When you are starting over or you're back at zero, you don't have a lot of leverage in any relationship. We like to make it up and project our leverage, which is why people show these beautiful lives on social media, even though their lives are in shambles. But a much more productive use of your time is to humbly show gratitude and see where you can help those people. So I make a list of 10 people and I write a handwritten card. And the format of it usually goes like this. I just wanted to tell you that as a result of our last interaction, you inspired me to do X, Y, and Z. And it could be as simple as, you inspired me to take my life in a new direction or to start a new business or to pursue wealth. And you inspired me by doing X, Y, and Z. Next time I see you, I'd love to tell you more about it, but that's for another time. In the meantime, I just wanted to tell you that I've taken this action as a result of our interaction. And if I can ever be a resource for you, I would consider it a privilege. Feel free to reach out, reach out anytime and sign your name. It's a pure note of gratitude and a token of appreciation in the form of you taking an action or showing what you are gonna do differently as a result of meeting that person or talking with that person. Invariably, six of those people will reach back out and say they got your card and that they would love to chat. And you might book coffees with four of them. When you set up that coffee or that phone call, your job is just to ask about them, what they're up to, what they're excited about where they need help. Because you're in opportunity mode when you're starting over. You're not in ask mode. You're looking for ways that you can be of value. You're looking for ways that you can help someone else. Step two is a little bit counterintuitive. Instead of jumping in and trying to be valuable, you ask a more helpful question, which is, who do you need to meet right now? What type of people could help you? And your job is to look in your network, your Rolodex, and say, who can I introduce that could help this person? You take yourself completely out of it. And you try to be the networker for the people that you want to network with. When you are the person who makes an introduction, you're actually a give to two people. And it's interesting because you don't have to do anything except make the connection. So when you find two people who have something to give to each other, that is a give to both people and you don't have to do anything. And your brain is gonna say, well, what do I get out of this? Nothing, you don't matter right now. You don't have any leverage. You don't have anything to offer except more opportunities for other people. So when you're the person who connects other people, you've always have opportunities to give to other people, which makes you valuable. Isn't that interesting? By showing where you can be of opportunity to someone else, you create opportunities for yourself. When you are in full service to other people, opportunities just come your way. Now, I have made the mistake of trying to figure it all out in my head or trying to plan exactly how I'm gonna make X number of things happen or X number of dollars, but the way that you actually make those things happen is just looking for ways where you can be a value and you becoming more valuable in the process. When you were thinking about that, Every opportunity around you is an opportunity for you to become more valuable. It may not be your long-term gig. It may not be the thing that makes you a million dollars, but it's one more thing that makes you more valuable in the marketplace, which increases your overall ability to earn and create and give. When you are stuck or starting over, it always comes back to people. It always comes back to people that have the resources that you want. And you don't go to them and ask for it, you go to them and you help them increase the number of resources that they have. When you're thinking about how do I make them successful? How do I make them rich? How do I help them accomplish what they want? You always have opportunities. And when you get into the mode of doing that long term, then you'll always have a Rolodex that gets better and better over time of people that you can write thank you cards to and call when you're in a tough spot. I know some of you are watching this and you're thinking, yeah, but like my Rolodex isn't very deep. Well, now is a really good time to start. Well, now is a really good time to make a list of 10 people that you like don't hate, that you could contribute to. It's the person at your church who drives a nice car. It's your old employer that helped you out. It's that teacher that did a kind thing for you in 12th grade. It's that professor that you always wanted to know a little bit more because they seem to think like positively 
and they seem to have some connections and they know what's going on in the world. It's those types of people at the beginning. So when you start to build that network and you start to give to them, they will inevitably ask, well, what about you? What are you up to? And you just honestly say, I'm in transition right now. I'm looking for my next thing. That's it. And you're looking for opportunities to give and serve and create. And the best part is being in service to other people and thinking about other people is like the hack to life when it comes to happiness. It feels good to give to other people. It feels good to help other people. But when you're stuck and you're at zero and you got nothing going on, you're probably thinking about yourself. And you're thinking about woe is me and how am I gonna make something happen? And how am I gonna pay for my Lambo? And how am I gonna look good on social media? And what crypto is gonna go to the moon? And so you're in scarcity mode, thinking about yourself the whole time. It sucks, we all hate it. But when you go into give mode, when you think about other people, when you think about how I can make somebody else better, it feels awesome. It, 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 it makes you feel good, which actually is another way that you become more valuable because everybody wants to do business with happy people, happy, productive, giving people. God, so simple. When you're starting over again, start giving, start thinking about others, start serving, and just start where you are. You know, start, start with who's showing up right now. Start with those 10 people that you can book a lunch date with. And you're not asking, you're offering, you're giving, you're creating with no expectation. That alone will take you out immediately of being in a dark place, of starting over, and you'll have momentum and opportunities again. That's it. I'm done. I hope this gets you out of zero ASAP. I'm Ryan Daniel Moran. Thanks for watching.